Hey guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Android 10 TV box that I picked up on Wish.com for $31. Now I completely understand that this isn't much cheaper than I could have got on eBay or even Amazon, but this popped up on the front page of Wish and I wanted to see what I'd receive because recently I've done a couple reviews for phones and handheld game consoles from Wish and basically what I got was nothing like the listed stated. So I want to check these Android TV boxes out. I've seen a lot of them on Wish, and I've had a few people ask about them. So this supposedly has 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigabytes of internal storage, and it's powered by a quad-core H616 CPU. Now this is an all-winner CPU, very similar to the older all-winner H6, but this should be clocked at 1.9 gigahertz, and we have a different GPU here. We have an upgraded GPU, it's the Mali G31 NP2. It should have gigabit Ethernet, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and USB 3.0. Now, looking at the side of this thing, I'm pretty sure this does not include USB 3.0. I'm pretty sure this only has two USB 2.0 ports on it. But we also get our 5 volt, 2 amp power supply, 6 foot HDMI cable, our infrared remote, and a user manual. So far, everything's looking just like the pictures did on Wish, and that's really surprising because everything that I've ever ordered from Wish came in, and it wasn't exactly what was listed. So they offer a few different models of these. Some come with 2 gigs of RAM, some come with 4, but I opted for the 4 gigabyte model with 64 gigabytes of RAM for $31 shipped. This was in the fast shipping section for the United States. As you can see, it does state that we have Android 10, 6K, HDR, AC Wi-Fi for that 5 gigahertz, and that quad-core H616 CPU. If everything is really present here, this wouldn't be a bad deal for $31 free shipping in the United States if you're looking for a cheaper Android TV box. So I'm going to go ahead and connect this to a little portable monitor. I'll sign in, get a few apps downloaded, and we'll see how this thing performs. The monitor I'm using here is just a little portable HDMI monitor. It's nothing special. It is 1080p, so we'll get a decent picture out of it. But I will be connecting this to my game capture so we can get a better look at the interface. Right off the bat, I've never seen this specific interface on an Android box, and it actually looks pretty good. Now there's a bunch of stuff that I want to check out here. I need to go ahead and sign into my Google account and get some apps downloaded so we can really see if this is running Android 10. But we can look here. Most of the time it is spoofed in this section. But if we find the About section, we should be able to see what version it's running. And it says Android 10. If we click on it a few times, we should get that Android 10 logo pop up. But this can be spoofed, so I need to download a few apps just to verify that this is really running Android 10. I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my game capture and start testing. All right, so here we are. Now, overall, the whole interface has been really snappy. I do like the way it looks, but performance really hasn't been great in gaming or pretty much anything else that I tested. And I expected this from the beginning, given that this is a $31 Android TV box from Wish.com. So on the main menu, we have Google Play. We got YouTube, Chrome, My Files. We can actually add different apps over here if you want to. We'll just add Minecraft. The next section here is just our app launcher. And one thing I noticed about this is it is running Android 10, and it's the Android TV version, which is something I'm personally not a big fan of on something like this. I'd rather have regular old Android just because there are a finite amount of apps on the Android TV store, especially in the gaming department. So first things first, I downloaded IDA64, and this is just going to give me some information on the box itself. The device is being spoofed as a Google Pixel 2. It's stating that we have 4 gigabytes of LPDDR4X, and I do believe we have 4 gigs of RAM, just because our available memory is sitting at 1.5 here. And with this kind of box, it does eat up a lot of RAM. I've actually started a bunch of apps and haven't cleaned anything out yet, so I do believe we have 4 gigs of RAM, but it's not LPDDR4X. The CPU is the all-winner H616, but it's not clocked at 1.9 GHz. This is underclocked to 1.4 GHz, which will really hurt performance in pretty much everything on this box, and I'm not sure if they did it because of heat or stability. Moving down to the display, we do have that Mali G31. It's stating that we only have one GPU core, but this is the MP2. And never mind the screen resolution, AMOLED display, and things like that. This is connected to a 32-inch 1080p monitor. And the box is running Android 10, which is really surprising. I was figuring this would be spoofed from Android 8 or 9, but yes, it is Android 10, but it's the Android 10 TV version. Now in IDA64, it stated that our screen was 1280 by 720. Now that was just stating the screen of the Pixel 2 that this is supposedly spoofed as. 
But I have noticed something really important. If I head over to YouTube and start a video. So we'll start out with Big Buck Bunny. Now they claim this can do 4K and 6K. We're at 1080p. Everything's looking pretty good. We have zero drop frames, but if we take a look here, our viewpoint is only at 1280 by 720, while the video is running at 1080p. Now, even though the device can output 720, 1080, or 4K, YouTube's only really going to be running at 720p on this box. Let's see if it can handle 4K. I don't think it can. And I am on Ethernet because the Wi-Fi on this is pretty bad. Got to let it buffer. 134 drop frames. Yeah. Viewpoint is 720p. The resolution of the video should be at 4K 60. It's just not going to handle it. So after a little bit of buffering, it can do 4K streaming from YouTube, but we have a lot of drop frames, 840 so far. We're still only at a 720p viewpoint, and the video should be running at 4K 60. So 4K video playback will really come down to the app you're using. Since YouTube only displays at 720p, we're only getting a 720p picture here. I also wanted to test some native 4K video playback. So we have a 4K video at 60fps, but we're around 24 to 27fps. I've seen it drop down a little lower than that. But this should be running at 4K 60. Unfortunately, this box just isn't powerful enough to run it with this very popular video playing app that I'm using here. Now there are other apps out there that might work better, but a lot of people are gonna go to this because this is built in. Another thing to keep in mind when buying a cheaper Android TV box is these are not certified for like full HD versions of Netflix and some other apps. So most of the time you're gonna be getting the phone version of Netflix instead of the Android TV HD version. So I tried to run some benchmarks, but pretty much everything's crashing, like Geekbench 4, Geekbench 5, uh, and 2.2. The only one I could get to run was 3D Mark, so we'll see what that came up with. And we scored a 263, which is not great. Remember, this is showing up as a Pixel 2. And we're better than 6% of all other results on 3D Mark. So yeah, definitely not a great score for OpenGL. And I'm pretty sure if I was able to run the other benchmarks that were crashing, we would have scored pretty low on those as well. I also wanted to test out some gaming. So we have Asphalt 8. This is the only one that was on the Google Play Store. I know there's newer versions out there, but as you can see, it's pretty laggy. And if I had to guess, we're around 25 FPS running this game here. I also tested out Minecraft. Now this is the beta version, just so I could get that FPS counter up on screen, and we're getting an average of around 20 FPS. By the way, I went into the settings and turned everything off. Fancy graphics, disabled the clouds, and I've turned the chunks all the way down to 6. So gaming performance on this box is really horrible. So we're still in the realm of gaming, but I wanted to test out some emulation because that's pretty much what I do on my channel. This is PlayStation 1 using PC SX rearmed in RetroArch. I have the FPS listed up in the top right hand corner, and it's running PlayStation 1 games very well. I mean, we're at a constant 60 FPS and it looks great. But PlayStation 1 isn't one of those super hard ones to emulate, so let's move over to N64. I'm using Moopin 64 plus FZ from the Google Play Store, and this is some of the worst performance I've ever seen out of GoldenEye 007. I even tried lowering the resolution in the emulator itself, but that doesn't seem to help much. There's one last emulator I want to test here. It's not looking great for emulation on this device, but we'll go with some PSP. I'm using the latest version of PPSSPP, OpenGL Backend, Tekken 6, which isn't the easiest game to emulate, but it's not the hardest either. Got all of the speed hacks on, and we're only getting around 25 to 28 FPS, so it's really hard for me to recommend this box for pretty much anything. I wanted to do a quick teardown on this. Now, the last item I did a teardown on that I got from Wish didn't go so well, so I'm going to be gentle with this one here. 
And it looks like we have our 32 gigabytes of storage. This was supposedly 64. Four RAM chips here. There might be some on the other side. So let me go ahead and get this board out. And surprisingly enough, this does contain four gigs of RAM. We have eight 512 megabyte chips here, making a total of four gigs of RAM. And that's really surprising, but this is not DDR4X like it's stated in the system menu, it's DDR3. So the listing was right with four gigs of RAM and Android 10. Unfortunately, this only has 32 gigabytes of storage and no AC Wi-Fi. It's only 2.4 gigahertz. Either way, this box is really slow and I wouldn't recommend anybody else buying this. But I do want to see if this is really the CPU as advertised, the all winner H616. And in order to get this heatsink off, I did have to heat it up quite a bit because it's glued to the CPU. But I should be able to get it off now. And it slid right off. This thing is hot. I don't want to touch it. And after all that, it is the H616 CPU, but it is underclocked from 1.9 gigahertz to 1.4, which really makes a difference in a box like this. So in the end, the performance on this box is absolutely horrible. The moral of the story here is stay away from these Android boxes on Wish.com. I was actually pretty surprised that it wasn't that far off from the actual listing. We did get Android 10 as the operating system and 4 gigs of RAM, but we didn't get that extra 32 gigabytes of storage or AC Wi-Fi. I wouldn't come out and say I got totally ripped off because this was only a $31 Android box, but the listing was off from what I did receive. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and I'm not going to leave a link to Wish.com in the description because I recommend not buying something like this from a website like that. But like always, thanks for watching.